Hello everybody, I'm Ian Abernethy and in this video I want to talk briefly about Kion or fundamentals, Kion training. Now if you're a traditional karateka watching this, you, you know, you will have an idea of what you uh, believe Kion to be and for most people that's uh, marching up and down the dojo uh, doing techniques against the air. Now I believe that can be a useful and important practice, but it's not the fundamentals, it's just part of the fundamentals and, and in this video I want to talk about the other elements that we need to make sure we've got in place to realize the true value of Kion training. So in order to help us determine whether a given training method will make us more effective or not, we need to define what effectiveness is. Now to do this, I've got two models that I use, right, which I find quite useful when it comes to physical action. Uh, and I call us the three T's or the three W's. Now which model I'll use will depend on what audience I'm talking to and which one I feel will relate to more. But they're essentially two ways of saying the exact same thing. So you've got the three T model and the three W model. The three T's are the timing, the tactics and the technique. The three W's are the what, why, and when, but the same thing, right? So the technique is the what, you know, what physical action do we do? The timing, when do we do it? So that's the same thing again. And the tactics, why do we do it? You know, is this helping achieve our specific goals in this specific context? So if you're missing any one of those three T's or those three W's, the technique will be ineffective. If you do the right thing, but a second too late or a second too early, it will not be as effective as it could have been. It may not be effective at all. Uh, if you do the right thing at the right time, but for the wrong reasons. So, so let's say you um, uh, do a deliberate takedown in a situation where you're facing multiple opponents. You know, you, you, the technique worked, you know, and you did it at the right time, but the tactics are off because you're going to get kicked by all those extra people, you see. So the, the, the tactics are always dependent on this, this, the scenario too. So we need to be mindful of the, the what, why, and when, the timing, the tactics, and the technique, all three need to be in place uh, for a given method to be, to be effective. So good technique alone is only one part of what makes you effective. You also need to do that right technique at the right time. So you need to develop, you know, cues, actions and reactions will ensure that your timing is right. Uh, and also you need to be mindful of tactics depending on which situation that you're in. So you need drills that enable you to uh, make the right tactical decisions on the fly. Now they're your true fundamentals. You know, you've got the fundamentals of technique, the fundamentals of timing and the fundamentals of tactics in place. That's when it will work. So if you're just working technique, your fundamentals aren't in place because you're missing the other two elements, right? So that would be one of the negatives of, 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 of Kion within the karate sense, you know, doing the basics. You're not doing the basics, you're doing a third of the basics. The other thing is when it comes to developing technique, while doing it in the air can be useful, it should be noted that you don't get feedback when you're doing it in the air. And, and this can be problematic within traditional circles because strange ideas can develop because things aren't being checked and tested if the key on is being, or the solo training has been over -egged. So if you're talking about a given method, you need to hit it hit pads with it and then you will know from the feedback of the pads and the holder whether you're generating impact or not you can't get that when you're doing it in the air same you know if, you, if you're doing a motion which is a locking motion or a throwing motion or anything like that obviously you need to practice that against a partner for your partner to give you feedback as to how it feels and then ultimately of course we need to test this in sparring as well where the other elements will come into play you know um, the, the technique will be applied along with the timing and the tactics but you need all of these things you know in order to determine uh, how good your technique is you know whether, whether and now of course now if you find a problem within the technique so you're doing the pad work and your partner goes ah, it's not feeling great or you know you're sparring and it's not landing in the way that you, you would like not because your timing's off or the tactics are off but there's there's a fault with the technique that's not giving it what you want it to give you're not quite getting it's like take the throw you're not quite getting the leverage or the rotation or whatever it happens to be then obviously you can stop that work it with a partner in a compliant way and if it comes down to a, a motion element or a body awareness element there can be a case say okay let's just put the partner down for a second let's put the pads away and let's just work 
work on your hip alignment here, or let's just work on your weight projection, or let's just work on your footwork for this given part, right? And so, and you know, I've done all of that. You know, I've, I've been in boxing gyms, judo dojos, where they've done what I, as a traditional karate, would recognise as kion. In judo, let's just work your footwork a little bit. I want you to do the little footwork drills on the mat for this throw. Okay, now let's go back with a partner, or, 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 or you know, shadow box in front of a mirror is a form of kion. Okay, bang bang. Do you see what you're doing there? See how that hand's dropping a little bit? Okay, look, work. I'll do a few more. That's kion. You know, so it definitely has a, a useful role to play, isolating things like that. But I would suggest in traditional circles, again, we do do too much of it. If you're spending 40 minutes, 45 minutes of every class, half an hour even, uh, marching up and down the, the room, there are more efficient ways to train, to develop good technique. You need your impact equipment. You need feedback from partners. You need to be trying it in live sparring. And it can be useful for the, for the uh, body control and body awareness element of it to break it down and to get you to do it without any external stresses and that's I think where uh, Keon does have an, an important role to play but I say the danger is in traditional circles it's sometimes over egged and believe that if you just march up and down the, the room doing what you you know just solo training then the technique has been developed and the fundamentals are in place and I don't believe that is the case. Okay, to be clear, you know, I'm a great believer in Keon, not through some dogmatic traditionalism. I mean, I'm a traditional martial artist. I love the traditional martial arts. I'm a great believer in the traditional martial arts, but I regard myself to be a true traditionalist. And the true tradition has always been of, we take what the previous generation developed for us, we do our best, we play our part, we do our best to make it better, and then we pass it on to the next generation for them to do the same. If, if you look at the development of the traditional martial arts, not one generation has passed it on unchanged, right? They've all made the changes which they believe are for the betterment of the art. And this is not an individual doing this, this is all karate, trying to do it together as a collective in order to advance our art, with you know each individual playing the part within that. In that sense, I'm a traditionalist. So for example, I've dumped uh, three-step and five-step sparring, no one's ever been to convince me of any demonstrable reason why we should do those you know I, I just regard them as a waste of training time so I've, I've dropped them but I haven't dropped Keon you know what I mean I know some people who have but I haven't because I do believe it has a great deal of value um, it has a great deal of value when it's understood it's just part of the whole. For true effectiveness, you need to make sure that the timing, the techniques, and the tactics are also, you know, the whole lot's been worked, right? Um, and with the technique, while breaking down individual motions uh, on working on your own can be useful, it needs to be part of the whole. You need empirical testing against pags and bads and, and partners and all that, 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 that kind of stuff. So um, Keon definitely has a role to play. Um, it should be part of that mix. We shouldn't do too much of it. And Keon in talking about line work on its own and not the fundamentals it's just part of it it's one small part of how we develop good technique and it's one small part of an effective uh, of effectiveness because we also make make sure that we're considering the timing and the tactics so yeah i hope this has been uh, uh, an interesting discussion for you and as always you know i welcome thoughts and feedback okay thanks very much for watching